Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Understanding Ratios. This is part one. Now I'm excited to teach this because the idea of a ratio is something we use, of course, now, but we use it in many, many topics coming, coming in the near future in math. Now you might have heard the phrase ratio and proportion. So ratio is something we're going to learn here. The concept of a proportion is something we're going to learn about very, very shortly, but we're not there yet. But they do go together. The concepts do go together. Uh, like peanut butter and jelly, you might say. They're, they're cousins of each other. And we're going to con conquer uh, proportions very soon. Here we're going to only talk about the idea of what a ratio is. So in a nutshell, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. I'm going to say that again because it really boils down the entire concept. A ratio is a comparison between two numbers. I'll say it one last time because it's really the most important thing of this entire lesson. A ratio involves two numbers and the ratio itself just compares those two numbers. So the only way that you could ever have a ratio in the first place is if you have two numbers. You can't have a ratio with one number. Uh, you have to have a ratio with two numbers. It's a comparison of two numbers. So let's just jump right into it. Let's say we have a room and we have boys in the room and we have girls in the room. And in this room, we have three boys in the room, and we also have six girls in the room. So three boys and six girls. So we want to do a comparison between the number of boys and the number of girls in the room. So we might say that we're comparing three boys to six girls, or we might phrase it as three boys compared to six girls. All of those phrases are just locking together the boys and the girls kind of as in, in an envelope, and we're comparing those two together. Three boys, six girls. So how would we perform such a comparison? What would make sense? Well, first, let's just write down. We're talking about three boys, and we're talking about in the same room, there's six girls. So the relevant numbers are three and six. So really the, the boys and the girls, I mean, that's just for this example. Really, ratios involve numbers. So the number three and the number six are the two numbers we're comparing. But I wanna tag it with boy and girl so that you have something in your mind you can remember, all right? So what does it mean to compare these two together? That means that if I go through a, uh, 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 this small sample of three boys to six girls, then for every three boys I encounter, I should encounter six girls because we say the ratio between boys and girls is kind of locked. So the three compared to the six is what locks the ratio of boys to girls, right? So how do we actually write this comparison down? Well, we're comparing boys as compared to girls. So what we actually do is use fractions, right? So the three will go on the top of the fraction and the, the fraction bar, you can kind of read it as compared to because we're doing comparison, right? So it's three on the top compared to is the fraction bar and on the bottom it's six. Right? So you might say, why are we using fractions for this? It just doesn't make sense. Well, now you're learning that the idea of a fraction, which we've already mastered, is now going to be applied to something totally different. See, in math, you have tools in your tool bag, and you pull them out and you use them. Here, we're pulling out the fraction tool belt, and we're using it for a totally different thing. So we're comparing boys and girls, three to six. Now this is a comparison. Whatever you have on the top, as compared to whatever you have on the bottom. For every three boys we consider in this room, then we should encounter six girls because the ratio of three as compared to six is going to be locked. Now, if you notice, this uh, ratio as written as a fraction here, um, this ratio can be simplified further because remember, fractions can always be simplified, right? And these ratios are just going to always be fractions. So we know that the ratio of three boys to six girls can be simplified because I can divide and simplify this fraction by dividing by three on the top, dividing by three on the bottom. This is just fraction arithmetic. And what do we get? Three divided by three is one, and six divided by three is two, right? So what have we actually said? We said in the beginning, we're comparing boys to girls, three boys to six girls. So we write it as a fraction, three boys compared to six girls. But then we say, well, all fractions can be simplified. So we simplify it using the regular way that we always simplify things, divide top and bottom. And then we get a new ratio. This is one boy, because remember, boys are on the top. So this is boys on the top as compared to two girls. And this is what we call the simplified ratio. And we, and we write it as a fraction. So you can kind of think of the top number here being boys and the bottom number here being girls. And you might say, well, this is kind of dumb because I write the fraction down and I get a new fraction. Isn't this just fractions? Well, yes it is, but we're applying it to something else. What we are saying 
is that if we have a room of three boys compared to, and, 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 and looked at in comparison to six girls, we have a ratio of three compared to six. But that ratio can be simplified to a simpler ratio, right? Which is one boy compared to two girls. Another way of looking at it is, for every three boys I encounter, I should encounter six girls. That's the same thing as saying that for every one boy I encounter, I should encounter two girls. Because if I encounter one boy and then I come across two girls, and then I encounter another boy, and I come, then I must encounter then another two girls. If I encounter my third boy, then I must then encounter my next two girls. And if I add them all up, I've encountered three boys, and I've encountered six girls. Because I've, if I do it one time, I, I get, find one boy and two girls. If I do it another time, another boy and another two girls. And if I encounter another boy, I should encounter another two girls. If I add them all up, then I have encountered three boys and six girls. You see, these are, are, are the same ratio. What we're saying is three as compared to six is the same exact ratio as one compared to two. So the problem here is we wanna give you two numbers. You're gonna write it as a ratio. If you can simplify the ratio, you will, and you will circle that ratio as the answer. So the simplified ratio here is one boy for every two girls. And the other way that we can write ratios is instead of writing it as a fraction, we can write it as one with a colon two. We could write three colon six here if we wanted to, three colon six. So there's two ways to really write ratios. First way is write it as a fraction. Three boys for every six girls, three boys for every six girls with a colon. Here that reduces to a simplified ratio of one boy for every two girls, and you can write it as in terms of the colon here, one boy to every two girls. So that is honestly it in a nutshell. The idea of a ratio is just comparing two numbers together. So we write them as a fraction. And then if we can simplify the fraction, we will, and we may get a simplified ratio, but the ratio maintains its relationship to the original problem statement. When I encounter one boy for every two girls, that's exactly the same meaning as encountering three boys for every six girls because the two mean the same thing. And notice if I multiply this fraction by three on the top and three on the bottom, of course I will get back what I started with. All right, I think as we get to more and more problems, you'll understand a little bit more. Let's say that we have two fences I'm building, and the first fence is four meters long, and the second fence is, uh, let's see, in this case, six meters long. So the first fence, I'm just gonna do, draw it something like this, is four meters long. It's literally just a fence I'm building in my backyard. And then the next fence is a little bit longer. It's six meters long. See, this one's a little bit shorter, and this is a little bit longer. Now, what if I wanted to find the ratio between these two fences. I would be comparing four meters for fence number one, or fence A, and I would be comparing that to six meter fence over here. And so if I was gonna write a ratio of this fence compared to this fence, in terms of the lengths, I would say that that would be four as compared to six. The ratio of four meters for fence number one compared to the six meters for fence number two. But this fraction, you can see, can be simplified. And so I can simplify this fraction by dividing the top by two and the bottom by two, right? And what do I get over here as an answer? Four divided by two is two and six divided by two is three. So what we're saying is the original ratio is four meters as compared to six meters, but that is exactly the same relationship as two meters for every three meters. And of course I can write this in two ways. I can write it as two with a colon three as a simplified ratio as well. Either one represent the same thing, but most of the time we use a fraction to represent ratios in math, but you will see this as well, all right? So what this is basically saying is the relationship between this fence and this fence. It's showing you, relatively speaking, how they compare to one another. In this case, there's exactly double the amount of girls as there is boys. Notice if, if, if a boy is, if we have three boys and six girls, then we have it always two times the number of girls. Notice here, one to two is exactly the same relationship. We always have double the amount of girls as boys, but this is the most simple way of expressing this relationship, that we always have double the amount of girls. Or you could look at it and say, we always have half as many boys as girls. Right? That's what the ratio one half really means with the way we're writing it this way. Three to six reduces to one uh, compared to two. And that means that the ratio of boys to girls is one half. That really means there's always half the amount of boys as we have for girls. 
For this one, when we're comparing four to six, and we write it as four compared to six and simplify it as two compared to three, what it means is this relationship, this ratio, has the same mathematical meaning as this one, but it's just simpler. What this means is that for, uh, for every four meters I go down my fence, I should go down six meters on the other fence. It gives you the relationship in size between the two. And that's the same thing as saying, for every two meters I go down the fence, I should go in fence A, I should go three meters down the other fence. You see the same relationship is here as here in terms of the comparison. It's just that, it's just that these are simpler numbers. But this is the simplest way I can represent the relationship between the numbers. So that's when I said in the beginning, that a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. It's not the individual numbers that matter, it's the comparison between the two. So here we're basically saying since we're comparing four as compared to six and we get two thirds, what we're saying is that the four meter fence is two thirds of the size of the six meter fence. That's what we're basically saying there. Lots of different ways to think about it, but at the end of the day to find the ratio, you're just, you're just making a fraction and simplifying. So let's say for our next one, we have two classrooms. We have eight students in the first classroom and 20 students in the other classroom. What is the ratio of the first classroom of eight students to the second class of 20 students? So we could say eight students compared to 20 students or eight students out of 20 students. The ratio between those numbers, the comparison is just eight students in the first class compared to 20 or out of 20 in the uh, second class. Now you can see these are both even numbers, so we can take the eight out of 20, and we can simplify this to find the simplest ratio that still maintains the relationship. So we can divide by four, and we can divide by four. Eight divided by four is two, and 20 divided by four is five. Now even though these numbers, two fifths, or two and five, are not anywhere in the original problem, these are actually the simplest numbers that still maintains the ratio or the relationship between classroom A and B. What it means is that, let's say for every eight students, uh, another way of, let's, let's think about it instead of classroom A and classroom B. Let's say that these numbers represent, in, in a 20 classroom uh, number of children, then eight of them have brown hair. So for every eight that have brown hair, eight out of 20 have brown hair, that's another way of saying it. Eight students have brown hair out of 20 total. That's the same relationship as saying that two out of five have brown hair, you see? So whether or not I count two out of five, or I count eight out of 20, it's still the same relationship because all we did to get here is just simplify the fraction. These two fractions are, they represent the same thing because we just simplified it there. And of course, we can write this ratio as two with a colon five. Two out of five students in a room will have brown hair, for instance. All right, moving right along. Let's say, for the next one, I have uh, different cups of coffee, let's say. I have 15 cups over here, out of 20 cups total, 15 out of 20 cups. Maybe I'm talking about what, uh, how many cups of them have, um, have milk in them and how many don't. Let's say 15 of them, 15 cups have milk in the coffee and the other, uh, the total number I have is actually 20 cups. So I'm comparing 15 cups to 20 cups. So I would say the ratio of cups with milk in it to cups total is 15 cups of the coffee have milk in it and there's 20 total cups. So 15 out of 20 of them have the milk in it. This is the master ratio, the master relationship. And we can see that we can simplify this 15 compared to 20 because we can divide the top by five and the bottom by five. And what do we get as an answer? 15 divided by five is three and 20 divided by five is four. So we say the simplified ratio is three fourths or three compared to four, or we can write it as three colon four. So what this means is that if in my original uh, uh, 20 cups of coffee, 15 of them have milk in them, that's the same ratio as if I only looked at four cups of coffee and three of them had milk in them. So it's the same relationship between the two uh, things that we're talking about, cups of coffee with milk in it and total cups of coffee that we have on the table. So three out of four cups, ha ha three out of, four cups ha of coffee have milk in it is the same as 15 out of 20 cups having milk in it. All right, it's the relationship between them. Next, let's talk about 80 participants in a race compared to 90 participants in a race. Maybe 80 participants have a red headband and 90 participants have a blue headband. We wanna compare the two populations of people that have the headbands in the race, 80 participants compared to 90 participants. The way that we write that ratio to compare them is to say 80 
out of 90 or 80 compared to 90. Maybe 80, 80 of them have blue headbands and 90 of them have he, uh, eight, uh, red headbands. So 80 as compared to 90 is the ratio between those two things. And of course, we can uh, simplify this. Whoops, if I can write 90 correctly. Sorry about that, 90 on the bottom. We can simplify this and we can divide the top by 10 and the bottom by 10. And when we do it, we get 80 divided by 10 is eight and 90 divided by 10 is nine. So what we're, and we can write this ratio as eight as compared to nine. So what we're basically saying is if 80 of them have uh, blue headbands and nine, as compared to 90 that have uh, red headbands, in other words, there's more people that have red headbands, but just a little bit more, right? That's the same ratio as if eight as compared to eight have red or eight have blue and then nine have red. So you see that the numbers are, they have the same relationship, but we're just simplifying it down to a more simplified ratio eight out of nine compared to 80 out of 90, same ratio. All right, let's say for the next one, we're talking about kilograms of mass, 28 kilograms of substance A as compared to 49 kilograms of substance B. Let's say you're doing, you're analyzing a mixture and it has 28 kilograms of flour in it and it has 49 kilograms of salt in it. So we want to compare the ratio of flour to salt. So the way that we actually write that ratio down is we say we have 28 kilograms, let's say, of flour as compared to or in ratio with 49 kilograms of salt. The fraction captures the relationship between them, but these numbers can be um, simplified, right? Because if I take 28 and 49, right, I can divide the top and bottom by 7, right, because 28 divided by seven is four, because four times seven is 28, and 49 divided by seven is seven. So the simplified ratio is four sevenths, or four compared to seven, or we could write it as four colon seven, and this is the simplified ratio. So what it's saying is if I have a master mixture of 28 kilograms of flour compared to 49 kilograms of salt, this locks in the ratio, but the simpler ratio, which represents the same thing, is that for every four kilograms of flour, I should have seven kilograms of salt. This represents the same relationship, the same ratio, it's just a, a simpler number, smaller number. So this is a, an application of why we simplify fractions. Now let's pick up the pace here. Let's say we have 10 dogs out of 12 pets. We're comparing 10 dogs out of 12 pets. The ratio would be 10 out of 12. 10 dogs total out of 12 pets. But we can simplify this, 10 out of 12. And we can divide the top by two and the bottom by two. And then that will simplify. 10 divided by two is five and 12 divided by two is six. So the simplified ratio is five sixths or five compared to six. So if I had 10 dogs out of 12 pets total as the ratio, that's the same as five dogs out of six uh, uh, pets total as a ratio. This captures the same relationship between the two populations that we're talking about. All right, almost done. Next one, let's say, let's express the ratio in simplest form between, let's just talk about distances, 40 feet to 55 feet. Let's say I have a 40 foot boat and I have a 55 foot boat. What is the ratio between them? A 40 foot boat as compared to a 55 foot boat. The ratio would be 40 compared to 55. I can, of course, simplify this because I know these are both divisible by five. So divide by five, divide by five. 40 divided by five is eight and 55 divided by five is 11. So what I figured out is the simplified ratio is eight as compared to 11, or you can write it as eight colon 11. So if I had a 40 foot boat as compared to a 55 foot boat, 40 out of 55, for every 40 feet I go down the first boat, I would go 55 feet down the other boat. That's another way of looking at it. The same way of saying that is if I go eight feet down the first boat, I should go 11 feet down the other one because this represents the same ratio. All right, only one more. Let's say that I'm comparing, I'm doing heads and tails, flips of a coin. I get 14 heads out of 20 flips, 14 heads, that's what I have to begin with, out of 20 whole flips. So the ratio of heads that I get in the coin to total number of flips is 14 out of 20. 14 heads, 20 flips. But I can, of course, simplify this, right? Because I can divide top and bottom by seven, or by uh, two, right? And 14 divided by two is seven, and 20 divided by two is 10, and I can write this as seven colon 10. 
right? So what I'm saying is if I get 14 heads for every 20 flips of a coin, it's the same thing as getting seven heads for every 10 coin flips total. And this is the simplified ratio that compares those two numbers together. So here we've conquered the idea of ratio. A ratio always involves two numbers. Notice there's two numbers, two numbers, two numbers, two numbers, two numbers. Always involves two numbers. And we are comparing them in the sense that we're locking in their relationship together. And when we write them as a fraction, we can simplify them to a simpler fraction. So we are using the, the, all of the skills that we learned in fractions, simplifying fractions, equivalent fractions, things like that, to get to the simplest ratio. When you get to the simplest ratio, it just has smaller numbers, but it still conveys the relationship between the two things that you're studying. All right, so here, I'd like you to go through these yourself. Uh, make sure you're getting the right answer. Follow me on to part two. The examples will be a little more complex, but still we'll get a little more practice with the concept of understanding ratios.